Rebelling against all fear and doubt, the church of God is still standing. The Bible says that the gates of hell will not prevail against that truth. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That truth of stability, that truth of life. Let's go together in prayer. We're going to sing some songs. We're going to worship. We're going to hear the word of God. And I want to have church. What do you say? Come on. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you once again for bringing us here together. My Lord, I do know that we're absolutely nothing without you. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. All things, dear God, consist because of you. There's a stability of life because of what you have done. And we know that you are the great I Am. We love you, my Lord. We thank you and I ask you, God, to bless the people here. The hearers, the worshipers, those that are struggling, dear Father. Let them hear your voice, God. Give us the victory we so desire, which is found in Jesus Christ. We love you. We thank you. In your most precious, most awesome and powerful name we do pray. And the church says amen. And amen. Let's worship here with this team, please. Worthy is the Lord, never was slain.
is praising the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We must understand that there are seraphim and angels of all sorts just saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Oh, who is worthy it is the Lamb of the living God. Church, this is our opportunity right now. This is our time right now to allow everything that we went through the day to go ahead and put it behind us and come forth with an attitude of praise and thanksgiving. Oh, what a blessed name it is. No other name but of Jesus Christ where men must be saved. We thank you, my Lord. We thank you. Let's say that again. Let's say it together, church. Oh, we thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Yes, he has. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Well, what I want to do, I want to go to the Lord in prayer. I had a text today from uh, Sister Kim Roberts, Sister Nella. Been uh, dealing with some, she's recently had surgery on her neck and a lot of pain. And uh, going through therapy, Sister Nelda, also fighting and swinging against the wiles of the devil. Amen. But I do know that God is able to heal. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. And I do know that God has touched my body many, many, many times. Sister Ann, I've had issues where the doctors say, well, we not, we're not sure what's going on. And, and all I could do was go to the Father in prayer. And you know what the Lord did? He stepped in, he intervened, and he healed. Can you say amen? I can remember my son, uh, I believe it was Justice Isaiah, dealing with a, a fever. Not knowing exactly what was going on. And, and fever reaching 105 degrees. And when you're a parent, when you got a child, that fever reaching 105 degrees, it's scary. It will sit there and give a medication, bring it down a little bit. The next day, we'll go ahead and, and uh, fever would rise up again. Then we'd give him some more Medicaid. It just kept going on and on, but never really broke. Took him to the doctor. Doctor looked at him and said, truly, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. I said, well, I guess we're going to take him back. We're going to monitor, keep giving him fluids. You know, something's interesting about a child. It doesn't matter, you know, how sick they are as long as that fever you know, it's, it's down, they're up running around having a good time. But when it gets on them, boy, they're out. And that's where mom and dad start to worry. That's where mom and dad start to just say, okay, we need for you to get better. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's a heavenly father that has the right medicine. Can you say amen? And by Jesus Christ, by his stripes, as the Bible says, we are healed. And I trust that. I still believe in miracles. I still believe in divine healing. I still believe in the gifts of the Holy Ghost with power and with evidence of God moving in and intervening in somebody's life. And just once again, by a show of hands, if God has touched your body and has healed you before, let me see your hand go up right now. Praise be to God. You know what that is? You lifted up your hand and you testified. You said, God did it. Well, I'm going to tell you, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I do know that God the Father is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he's healed your body back then, Sister Ann, you know what he can do? He can heal it again. Praise be to God. And what a revival that is. I thank the Lord for filling my soul. I thank the Lord for filling my heart. But most of all, when faith is in a position, and when we, we must see the miracles take place, we must see the power of God move. Not to get ahead of them, not to get behind them, but I'm going to tell you right now, God is moving in the lives of the individuals that are here right now. And not only in our lives, but also in the lives abroad. God's moving. I've seen the devil come against this family right here. Instantly start sending people to the hospital. Going ahead and trying to take them out. And just dealing with sickness, dealing with pain. But you know, I got a good report. I got a good report. Praise be to God. You know what's happening? God's healing bodies. Can you say amen? I got a good report. Hallelujah. I heard of my brother today, Brother Key. Called me up. Got to go through some more tests. But he realized something. He realized God the Father still has him. He's still holding on to his never changing hand. What are you saying, Pastor? I believe God's going to heal his body. And I'm standing on that. I'm believing that because there's nothing else but for God to move in and go ahead and make it right. Can you say amen? amen? That's the God we serve. You say, Pastor, what are you doing right now? I don't want to get in front of Brother Bowling. And I know there's been talk on preachers, you know, taking the service to some other way. I'm not, I'm not doing that. But as pastor, I want to stand here between these altars and knowing for first and foremost that God has given me the, the gift of healing. Can you say amen? I've seen it happen right here. And I knew through prayer for standing up and just interceding for others, God is able to move. And I want to do that together as a church. If you've got a need in your body, let me see your hand go up right now. Say, God, I have a need. I need for you to touch me. I need for you to help me. Let's everybody stand up together right now. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And we're going to trust God that he's going to move. But also, as we activate our faith, you say, Pastor, what do you mean activate our faith? Well, pain has a loud voice. Pain the 
lets us know where we're at in certain healings and certain situations. There's times where doubt and discouragement comes in and says, well, you've always got to be like that. Well, I want to encourage you right now. Activate your faith and tell that devil, no, it's not always going to be like that. I serve a risen Savior that is able to heal, that is able to make me whole, and I believe that today as I did yesterday and as in tomorrow. Can you say amen? amen. Praise be to God. Let's pray together dear Father. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you once again. We come against the army of darkness that's coming against this church, against these believers, against my fellow brothers and sisters. We stand against it right now and we rebuke it. We know that Satan has no place here. God is already to authority and this is God's ground. And we're standing on this holy ground knowing that God is able to move. And it must take that faith as a grain of a mustard seed. For without faith it is impossible to please Him. And I know that faith when it rises up, it is having that faith to remain in God's perfect will. And I do believe that God desires for us to be whole. My God, I'm asking you to do that right now. Every hand that went up, I'm asking you to touch their body. You've already performed miracles. I'm asking you, God, to do it again. And by faith, we receive it in the name of Jesus. By faith, we receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh, church, lift your hands right now. Lift your hands and just thank them. I'm asking you to touch Sister Kim. Help Sister Nelda. We're asking you, the Lord, to continue to heal Keith. Give him strength, dear Father. Kelvin's wife, thank you for the good report. But my Lord, we're asking once again for miracles. Every hand that went up, Sister Ann, asking you to bless her and strengthen her. Thank you, my God, for where you've already brought her from. But I know that you have a lot of more for her. And I'm asking you, God, to give her strength right now. Oh, all the way through, God, we love you. We praise you and we thank you, God. I know that you're able, my Lord. Have your way. Have your way in your church. Have your way in your people, dear God. Bless those, dear Father. Bless those that by faith, Lord, stepped up and said, I want to be in revival. Bless those, dear God, that have congregated here. And Lord, let us hear your voice. We love you, God. We praise you. This is your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If God heals your body, when God heals your body, are you ready to testify about it? Are you ready to say that God's done it again? Can you say amen? Let's sing another hymn. Can we do it? Go ahead and grab it. What are we singing? Page 133, I feel like traveling. Oh, yes. Yeah. 
Some of you are wondering why this jug is up here in these different jugs. I'm going to tell you why. God's been filling us up. Can you say amen? And I know I'm using this as a visual, but not only is these jugs being filled up in the spiritual, if you will, this heart's being filled up. I'm telling you, church, that this, this isn't just a, just a normal get-together. I do believe that God is going to move mightily in this meeting. But also throughout this community yes. and throughout your lives. Uh -huh. Can you say amen? amen? And I can tell just looking at your eyes, some of you know that. You, you're knowing something's got to change. Something has to change. And that's what it is, is dedication. And dedication to the cross, dedication to the word. Now I'm going to tell you, this Friday, tomorrow, I do invite everybody to come on back. And... Uh, we're going to be uh, having, you know, the, uh, Friday night. We're also going to have an afterglow. But I want you to know that this revival is going to keep going on. Okay? Right. It's going to keep going on. Now, we're not, we won't be meeting here on Saturday, but we will be meeting back on Sunday. And those who normally go to your church, please do. But we're going to continue on through Wednesday. Talk to Brother Bowling. God's ordained it. We worked it out. Praise be to God. And I just want us to keep moving forward. And I know every, everybody's feeling it in their bodies. Praise be to God. Is anybody the least bit tired? If you are, let me see your hand come up right now. You're feeling it in the body. But let me ask you this. Is your spirit starting to feel refreshed? Come right on. Now? Are you starting to feel stronger? And I know the weariness right now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I know the weariness of the flesh and just meeting together. But like I said... I believe in, in, in from the beginning of this revival, I knew that five days wasn't enough. Now I'm going to tell you that when Pentecost come, Pentecost come in 10 days. There was preparation for 33 years, but in 10 days we were endued into, from, uh, from, uh, from, from, from on high with power as God given it to us. Now that 10th day, now Wednesday is going to be that 10th day for us, brother. Wednesday will be that 10th day that we've met together and served God and coming together and saying, Lord, we need much more than what this world has to offer. Lord, we need much more than what religion has to offer. Lord, we need much more of, of before us a status quo preconception of what we think we need. Lord, we need you. Praise be to God. So I do encourage. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put that out there. In Moorhaven Church of God, I want you to know that I love you and I appreciate you. Everybody coming together and, and moving forward. I thank the Lord for the visiting churches here. Praise be to God. Amen. Have Clouston over here. Can he say amen? amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sister Ann for representing and, and uh, Sister Sylvia LaBelle. Or Sister Ann, I want you to stand up and testify. Will you do that, please? Praise be to God. Amen. We, we thank God today that he forgave you. Hallelujah. He you Praise the Lord. The baptism of the Holy Ghost all on the same day. Yes, yes, yes. Praise remember, be to God. I remember Sister Baxter preaching. Can't gave you five words she said. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Love Sister Ann. And then when I was just a little bitty Christian, you probably didn't believe that, but I was a little bitty Christian at one point in time. And God put us all together. And uh, it's allowed us to grow together. You know, we 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 uh we fought some battles, can you say amen? We went through it against that devil but God has always overcome God has always given us the victory all the way through him so I thank the Lord for what he's doing yes. amen so I just want to encourage you church keep praying if you can push that plate back for at least a meal and say God we need you to move amen. I do know that as coronavirus come through through this nation 
It tried to kill a lot of people. I know fear and worry came in, tried to kill a lot of people. But I've seen right here, Brother Bowling, what has remained is the church of God, the true church of God, the living church of God, a church that says I'm not going to take anything but for God to move, and I must worship the King. I must come together. And through wisdom and through the guidance of the Holy Ghost, we're still pushing forward. We're still trusting God. Come on. And I believe we haven't missed a lick of anything. We're drawing closer unto heaven. Right? Come on. We're drawing closer unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good to have Haley over here with us too. And that little bit. Praise God. Let's give her a hand. Amen. Amen. I know I said close to the Lord, but good to have Roger too. Praise the Lord. Give him a hand clap. Amen. Without further ado, I believe I've said the announcements, okay? And I just want to prepare everybody. Um, just to reiterate, Saturday will be, you know, Sabbath day, if you will. <laughs> I want you all to take care of business, do what you got to do there. Sunday, meet back over here through Wednesday. and uh, But still, we're having church tomorrow night. Can you say amen? Mm -hmm. And I, I just pray you come expecting. I'm looking forward to this service tonight. Looking forward to what God is going to do. God's going to move. Praise the Lord. Brother Bowling, are you ready, brother? All right, come on. Hallelujah. Let's get Brother Bowling. Aren't you appreciate Brother Bowling? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so very much, brother. Thank you, brother. Amen. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Praise Thank God. You. The devil don't have everybody, does he? No, we don't, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm enjoying the good spirit of the Lord, the good move of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Good food that you've been bringing in. Praise God. Amen. Just wonderful last night. Just took some of it home and had it for lunch. Amen. Just wonderful. Praise God. So we say thank you. Amen. And uh, uh, thankful for the mercy of God Amen. on our lives. Amen. Can't make it without Him. That's right, brother. Amen. That's right. He is great. Great to be praised. Yeah. Amen. He is above all, Amen. through all, in us all. We have everything God has got. If we'll just reach out and get a hold of it and keep it. Yeah. Amen. He's coming back after people that are looking for him. I'm going to look for him. Don't you? Amen. Amen. Appreciate my wife. Amen. We got married in uh, 1976. Amen. And she was almost 18. I don't recommend that age. Today, those people aren't grown up today like they oh, right, were back right, then. Right. Amen. All this electronics and all this stuff's made uh, children not grow up good. Right. Amen. But anyway, Come on, brother. Come on. God. I thank God for my wife. She's helped me so many times, and I'm thankful for her. I want her to testify tonight. Amen. Appreciate the Lord. Oh, yeah. He's always been there. Yes, Sometimes yes, yes. Sometimes you go through things, and you want to know if anybody's there. Is, is there anybody listening? Because God is listening, and He knows. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. I think it's going to help you tonight. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 7 through 9. Good to see you visiting here. Got to have Brother Roger with us. He's we're neighbors over there somewhere. I'm a, I parked at the church. He lives close, I, I guess. Anyway, we're glad he's with us tonight and, and these others here. Praise God. Amen. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 7, 8 and 9. And at that time, Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, because thou hast relied on the king of Syria and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubans a huge host? 
with very many chariots and horsemen. Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hand. Rely on God, you get something in your hand. Don't rely on God, you lose something. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect Come on, brother. Right. toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Here. Amen. We're one with God. Praise the Lord. Amen. There can be all kinds of enemies, but we're one with God. Yes, yes, Let's yes. pray. Thank you, Lord. Mighty hand of God. You are above all. We love you, Lord. You've never forsaken us. Thank you, Jesus. Anoint me tonight. Direct me. Guide me. I ask these favors in your name that you will meet needs in this house. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, and amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. When you don't rely on God, things are taken out of your life, out of your hand. Yes, brother. When you rely on God, things come to you. Things are put in your hand. The word rely means to put in full confidence. Yes. Total, absolute confidence. Rely. Something happened to Asa. He used to have a full confidence in God, a trust. He was a one with God. But listen to me. The reason in this last day that there is so much hellishness in the home, in relationships, on the jobs, and in the churches is that we have connected ourselves to the wrong thing and the wrong people and the wrong media. Amen. The spirit of Asa, that spirit runs free through our day and through our life. And we never should lose the greatness of the power of an almighty God while the devil is in high gear and deception is at its best and the high level of trickery going on. Amen. It is a must and an imperative that we get back to being one with almighty God. He's got that answer. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. My God never lost a battle. Never give up. He's never through the towel end. He is for the church. Can you say amen? Church down in the southern or over in the southern states of Louisiana. Somebody gave that church one million dollar check. My, 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 my. The associate pastor was the son of the senior pastor. And they had given it to him and he got in the, in the pulpit. Amen. To begin the service and he said, Dad, said somebody has given us this piece of paper and it has got one million dollars on it and give it to the church. Pastor didn't know anything about it. When he heard it from his son, he stood up and said, Son, we're not getting one penny of that. The church is not getting one penny of that. It's all going to missions. Can you imagine that? How does that happen? When you're one with God, you know what to do. And you hold on to that. We better get in tune with God. We better put God in the driver's seat. Amen. We better be prayed up, packed up, ready to go up. Have the whole armor of God on. The Bible said the Lord 
is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust. Praise God. You can be one with God. Stop looking to the left. Stop looking to the right. The Bible said, My help cometh from the Lord. Then we got some people claiming the Holy Ghost listening to Dr. Phil. Oh, heavens, Lord. Come on. Come on, brother. That's all right. And believe in his shenanigans. That's all right, brother. Come on. Listen to Oprah. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Oh, my. Oh, my. Come on, brother. Listen to Biden, Pelosi. Come on, brother. Oh, my. Help my help cometh from the Lord. Yes, yes. When you rely on God. He comes in and oh, takes over. Oh, Thomas McClontorn said, Time, true happiness is not found in any other place except in being united with God. Yes. There is something about the touch of a mighty God. David just went out with a sling and one stone, and he was one with God. Yes, Amen. Samson handled that lion with his bare hands because he was one with God. Moses stood before Pharaoh and said, Get out of here. We're not leaving our hook behind. Amen. Daniel in that lion's den never got a bite. Amen. Joseph in that pit came out of there. Why? He is one with the Almighty God. God will be there and God will show up and God will fight your battle and God will watch over your life. Praise the Lord. Let's come back, church. Let's oh, come back. Oh, you God. cannot violate the commands of God. You cannot do your own thing like Jonah and Samson did. You cannot walk away from God and treat God casually. Come on, brother. Oh, my. Preaching, brother. Don't lose anything that God gives you. Don't shut down anything that God operates in your life. Yes. Amen. The devil don't care how high you shout. He don't care how much you run the aisles. The devil don't care how much you shout on Sunday night. Just so you're not anointed. Just so that you don't have the victory. Just so you've lost your joy and lost the glory of God. That's all that matters. Satan wants us mechanical. When we just go through the motions. Habitable praise. When we just put on the dog. It's time to get serious. Jesus is about to come. Yes, brother. That's right, brother. Amen. 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 Paul said, our conversation is in heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. He was heaven bound. He was troubled on every hand. Have the works of the church all on him. We want to see Jesus. We want to be transformed. Yes. We want to have that finish line in view. Yes. But there's conditions that we must get into to be a citizen of that glory world. He said of this one thing that I do, forgetting those things that are behind me. For I press toward the mark of the high calling. Amen. Paul was saying, hey, I'm in the back stretch. I'm in the view of the finish line. I've got the passion. I'm ready for Nero's chop block. I'm prayed up. I'm packed up. I'm ready to go up. 
he had preached many a message and told the story. Praise God. Thousands were saved, no doubt, been delivered out of many things. The jaws of death. Paul wrote 75% of the New Testament. Ran out of town at one time. Let down a basket in a wall at a wall. Shipwrecked. 36 hours in the sea, hanging on a plank, beaten and whipped with the reed and the rod, was hungry and naked and left for dead. Amen. Have you ever been there? Maybe not to that extreme. But we've had losses. We've had grave sites. We've had loved ones leave us. Days at the hospital with loved ones. Sister Poodler for over five months in and out of the hospital with her husband, Brother Poodler. We've had tribulation. We've had the devil ramrod our lives. But we've got to be thankful even on the bottom. Hey man, we can look up and know that Jesus, for I have hope. Amen. And whatsoever state that I'm in, the man of God said there will be their content. Praise God. Trials of God. What do they do? They teach us. They develop us. They make us strong. They give us divine designs. Your back may be against the wall, but his back was against a dogwood tree. And he never gave up on us. And he never kicked us against the curb. God, right there with us. We got to be one with God. Amen. One with God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2001, one of the most noted NASCAR drivers was Dale Earnhardt. He died that year in the Daytona 500 race while competing. 17 million people viewing that race saw him crash into the wall. Dale Earnhardt suffered an impact trauma to where his neck was broken. Earlier before that race, he refused to wear what they call the hands, H-A-N-S. It stands for head and neck support. At that time, wearing the neck support was not a mandate. It was not a necessity. It was not a law. So he chose not to wear it. Today, now, since that wreck, it is. After 10 years, by 2011, not one wreck had caused a neck broken because of that hands supported. Right. Right. Dale Earnhardt said, when they asked him if he wanted to wear that neck support, he said no. He said because it restricts movement in the driver's seat. He wanted to be able to look and turn. Listen to me. Sometimes God permits restrictions, but they're intended to save us. Come on. He lays down rules and assignments and legal things in our life that may save us. Well, they make you uncomfortable. Amen. While they impede your physical movement, they're in saving your life. Yes. You don't see it. You don't recognize it. There are things designed to save our life. Yes. Noah had his harm's device when he stepped in that ark. Amen. The ark 
was not a cruise ship. The ark was not a speedboat. It was not a fishing boat. It was not a commercial ship. Noah was not in the Navy. Amen. Of the Coast Guard. The ark was to save Noah and his family from the flood. It was a necessity, essential. It must be, it's got to be in our life. Genesis chapter 6 through chapter 8 documents the very first pandemic. It was called the flood. The first known pandemic for humanity, this catastrophic, destructing thing, this flood, God gave Noah the mate, the material, the instruments, the measurements of a quarantine. The pandemic was the flood, the quarantine was the ark. Amen. And that proves that God will give you a ship yes. to spare you from God's storm. God allows things. God has a way of saving us from God. Because God can send a storm. And he'll give you a ship if you'll get a hold of it. Amen. Stop shoving back what God's trying to give you. The ark sustained Noah and his family amid the storm. Praise God. The grace of God will see us through. Amen. Everything that the will of God brings us. God is the great provider and the great sustainer and the way maker praise God he not only allows storms he controls them he's the eye of it he calms them he shuts them down he lets us walk on water amen God has already prepared to get you through whatever he's got you in God's got a ship for every God storm. Will of God for Joseph to be in that slave trade. Because God had him a place that he was going to be over the commissary to win his family back from starvation. The will of God for David was a fight to life. But he gave him a stone and a sling in his hand to do it. The will of God was for Jesus to die on a cross, born to die. But three days later, the grace of God brought him out of that tomb. Oh, hallelujah. Paul and Silas in jail. But my God brought the storm and brought the power of the Holy Ghost to wreck that place and to save that jailer. Amen. Peter thrown in prison. What are we going to do? The church prayed him out of there. And he came out of there with the victory. Amen. Listen to me. The ark. Amen. Was an expression of God's mercy upon one's life. Come on, Paul. Right. God already issued judgment and destruction on humanity because of a volume of sin in Noah's day. But then the Bible said, but Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Come on. Sometimes God sends storms to birth something new in our life. Yes. To bring it out of us. We didn't know that Noah had any engineering building until the storm came. We didn't know Noah knew about nautical things and expertise. God will allow chaos, calamity in one's life to birth a creative way in our life. Affliction 
will create advancement that will go further. Problems will bring a platform for God to perform on. You can find skills in your life that you never knew that you had. Amen. You can birth a business. Amen. Right after a storm coming through the trouble can strengthen your life and your whole family. God constructs circumstances that opens up new avenues for our life. It's like the man, he was working and hit with his hammer, his thumb, had to go to the emergency room. But when he got there, the nurse and him got to talking. They ended up being friends. He went along, he married her. All because of that hammer blow, just to that thumb, set everything up. Amen. Don't point fingers at God every time you don't like what's going on. He's setting you up for something good. Woo! Praise God. In that ark, only eight human beings and two of every kind of every animal. Oh, my. Can you imagine after 10 days of that water being up? Of the bodies floating around that had been drowned. Amen. Yes, that was a stinky ship with all of that dung and all of that waste of those animals. But it kept the humans alive. The church. We've got our problems. We've got knotheads in the church and we've got people with the shoes. But it's keeping us with God and away from sin and away from our hell. You might get hurt. Amen. You might have undesirable days. You may be misunderstood. And people may even lie on you. Amen. But listen to me. When you come to a river, just build a bridge and just get over it. Come on, brother. <laughs> if hairs were hurts, we'd look like grizzly bears. Come on. It's going to happen. Yeah. Help me with a song here tonight. Absolutely. It's going to happen. Yes, it is. Trouble's going to come. You cannot escape that. Come on, brother. All right. I'll take a stinky ark over the floodwaters that could drown my life. Come on, brother. Yes, yes, yes. The church taught you to live. The church taught you paths to take. Directions. And building a family. Praise God. We serve a perfect God who loves imperfect people like you and I tonight. Don't jump out of the boat. You can survive in the ship. We're quarantined in what God has made. The church is, is God's and he's alive. His son died but didn't stay dead. Amen. The church is not sinking. The church is not the Titanic. The church is in the hand of a mighty God. Amen. And when the God storms come, amen, the God mercy will show up. Pray for me, saying something. Let's stand here tonight.